Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday, the 5th of January, and we're now officially back into a full lockdown. Uh, luckily, I've got some repairs uh, on the cards to do. And today's repair is a Roberts radio. Well, it's a clock radio more than it. It's called an Autus 2. A uh, customer said it was working, then it flickered, then she turned it off, and then when she turned it back on again, uh, it basically didn't come back on. So I think the first order of the day is to check the uh, power supply. And uh, she pulled this um, uh, adapter out. Uh, let's just bring in the old zoom on here so we can see that a little bit closer. Okay. And so it's basically what she's done is uh, taken the little adapter off in case there was any uh, fuse involved. Um, but uh, there, as you can see, there are there is no fuse. So we'll pop that uh, back in there and then we'll plug that in and put the old test meter on it and see if we're getting any voltage out of it. Um, I very much suspect that that may well be the fault but we don't know uh, until we try it. So plug it into the bench, get the power, switch the bolts to DC. Uh, let's turn that down there so you can see what's going on and we'll unclip try again click that into there there we are nice solid connection one on the inside and we are getting 12 volts out so 12 volts out means uh, the power supply seems to be providing the right voltage so we'll move that out of the way and we will plug the radio in and it plugs into here and there's nothing on the display We'll turn it on by pressing the power on. No lights, nothing. So it's pretty much uh, not doing anything at the moment at all. Um, so uh, we are going to have to have a little look inside and see what's going on inside. So uh, I will take it apart. It looks like it's just held together with four screws on the back here. So we'll do that. Okie dokie. Um, she very kindly gave me uh, the user guide to go with it. So at least we've got that so we'll know how to do anything with it uh, when we uh, zoom in. Okay, so we're just going to take it into a standard field of view. And uh, at the moment, I don't think we need any extra lighting. I think we can see that's all working quite well. I'll do the power. screws out and uh, hopefully we don't have to buy any spudges it's just gonna pop out there we are that's lucky and inside we can see we've got uh, a let's zoom into that for you and we can see that we've got a uh, input socket here going into a, a coil and probably a little power FET device in there and a power supply uh, for the different circuits and uh, on the front we've got the main processor control display etc and this is the digital uh, board on here um, because it is an uh, a DAB and FM RDS radio so uh, I think the first order of the day is if we put power into uh, the 12 volt socket and then check to see what volts we're getting out of this board onto this board here. Uh, I think just for simplicity's sake I'm going to unplug the speaker. Uh, that's just going to make life a little bit easier for me. So let's um, pull that plug out of there. If it's going to come. We're going to come out okay so let's bring the power the test meter in and uh, apply power from the adapter onto that circuit board let's take that around the back a bit more space put that into there i haven't felt that socket 
feels maybe slightly loose. We'll check that out in a minute if we don't get any volts coming out of the little power adapter down here. So we've got um, two blacks and a red. Let's see if we can get into there. I don't know where we can get into any of those on that. I don't seem to see if we can get in in, in, in there. Okay, let's try doing it differently. Let's see if we can get this little board out. So let's take this socket out. Take the board out. We should be able to get to the back of it now. Socket, I think it was just loose. It's not, we haven't got any dry joints on there. So that looks right. Anyway, we can sort of clip this into place. A crocodile clip just on that side. On that bit of the board, and just hold it, stop it from dropping down inside. I'm not, hopefully, not short anything out. So let's see if we've got any volts. Uh, so that's our two blacks and a red there. Oh, suddenly I saw lights flashing on the front. Oh, that was interesting. I definitely saw lights flashing on the front there. Hmm. Let's try that again. I didn't short anything out. We've got six volts on that pin there. So it looks like the voltage supply is doing its job. Okay, let's go, let's hold it in place there. I can actually get to the pin. I'll have use the uh, USB chassis as ground. There we are, I can get in there now. Yeah, definitely six volts on there. Uh, if we got, that looks audio in and out. So I think power supply is doing its job. So I think we can ignore this little circuit board for the time being. Let's have a little wiggle around with some of the cables. You never know. Turning it on again. Nothing, no menu, nothing coming up there. Oh, interesting, they've got a little, what looks like maybe like a service port down there. It's a mini USB and it's got like a little um, spanner icon or wrench icon, if you call it a wrench icon, in America. Um, so that's not doing anything. That may be like a service port for programming purposes, I would guess. Pressing and holding the power button doesn't seem to do anything, but definitely we saw there was definitely a flash of the backlight for the display came up there. Let's just double check that that cable going from here down to there is making connections. We should have six volts there as well, which we do. Now, interestingly, 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 that's going to be, they look like just purely audio cables for the headphones and other sockets. What are those other sockets? Let's have a look. Let's 
So on the side, auxiliary in, 15 USB charging socket. Ah, so you can you take uh, USB out to charge other devices. And she did say that she used it to charge her phone up, so that's obviously what that socket is used for. DC in 5... Ah! That's interesting. Because, if we look at the book, it shows DC in 5 volts, 5.5 volts at 1.8 amps. Yet this adapter is outputting 12 volts. Sagem Com. Now, is it feasible that it's got too much voltage going in? And the little circuit says, I've had enough of that, I don't like that. Let's try, it's just a little experiment. We have a bench power supply. And I think that socket's not going to be right. So let's get our other one, uh, which is here. That's too th small. And that one fits okay. So bench power supply. We'll set that to 5 volts. Bang on. And we'll apply 5 volts to it. And it's drawing 0.04 of an amp. Not turning on. Let's just check and see what the output voltage is on that pin there. Oh, I've got my leads around the wrong way. Oh, that makes a lot of difference. Still 5 volts out. So obviously, pretty much, you can put anything into there and it should still, it's giving the right voltage. Let's just have a little look at the specifications because on the specifications it will state exactly what the voltage input should be. Uh, power requirements, mains AC 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, use only the supplied adapter. Right. So, probably that is the original adapter. Although, from experience, Roberts usually provide their own adapter, and I'm just wondering whether the customer has inadvertently grabbed another adapter. And this is overloading it some way, but um, I don't know. Pressing power on, there's no change in the current drawn. Still don't like the idea of it having too many volts going in, especially when it says it should only have five volts on that socket. But I'm guessing it's probably is supposed to be 12 volts. But it definitely says on there. Interesting. So I suspect then that there is a fault elsewhere in this. And I've had it in. Um, 
Nothing seems to be getting hot. So it's not drawing any extra current, but then the meter would have shown it anyway. That's a bit pointless test that was. I think I'm going to need some kind of service manual on this. Uh, we can just, just double check the output. Voltage, if we can plug that in. It's not going to be flexible enough. We need a little extension cable for that. Alright, so we can see that uh, Meter. So we're actually outputting 4.9 volts, which is fine. So that seems to be alrighty. I think I'm going to get a service manual and then uh, we'll carry on when we've got a circuit diagram. Right, we're back with this uh, Roberts Autos radio and uh, I contacted Roberts uh, and they very kindly said, very sorry, we can't supply you with a service manual because this is a current model. So I thought, okay, fair enough. Do I really want to take it any further or do I want to get the customer to go back to Roberts and see if they can fix it? And contact the customer and they said, it's out of warranty, it's over two years old um, and they're happy for me to carry on and see what I can do with it. So uh, let's press on and see what we can do. Now I've already taken the, the back screws out so let's uh, get back inside it and have a little look. See what we can see inside this beastie. And a cable. Looks like it's mounted in a little uh, bracket here. Uh, a little hole, a little clamp if you like. Um, so I'm if we can, uh, I don't think that's glued all clipped in. Let's see if we can just grab hold of it with my pliers and pull it out. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So that comes out. Um, we can disconnect the uh, service socket. If we get in here and again, I think I want to hold that edge of that socket down, like so. So that, I think, unclips from there. And I suppose we're going to need to take that out somehow. Now, okay, this board, I know we've had that out before. Um, we've got all of the controls on the front panel come in via three wire connectors. I was wondering if that's a bus. There's a little processor on there, so I know it's just a simple matrix. Seems to do an awful lot with just three pins. So let's, uh, again, get hold of that plug. Again, pull that plug out of there, the and it's just three pins. That comes out. So all the circuit boards are released, apart from the digital board. Now we've got that antenna plug. Is that a plug or is that, um, I think it's not a plug. It's a hard wire piece of cable. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that, I'm not going to try and pull that up because I don't think that's a plug. But I think if we can remove the screws holding this front fascia on, front panel rather, we should be able to. I'll do it once again in a particularly awkward angle for the camera. So if you can't see one, I'm taking the two screws out here, taking one out here, and taking the other out here. Can't see any other screws holding that panel in. So I think that panel should lift up. Just going to pull on the wires. There's nothing holding it there. It feels like something's holding it right in the front. What concerns me is that there is through those white plastic, through that little hole there. And it's black on the front, which is the display. And I'm just wondering whether the display has to come off to reveal a screw on the other side. There's a, down, there's, a, there's a clip holding the panel there and there. So I'm going to have to take the digital off. So again, we should be able to just squeeze the little stand-offs together. So stand off the screws together, can we then just get the digital board off of there? I don't know if we're behind it. I'm sorry, just a standard connector. Mm. So we've got a long flat baby screwdriver in there. Just either gently ease it off the board without damaging the board underneath. Not easy enough. Mm. Oh gosh, I wish I had a circuit diet. That service manual should be the best way to get this apart. I really hate yanking things and pulling things apart. There's no other screws on there, but lifting the board at this end does not feel flexible. It feels like it's holding onto the display. I'm wondering whether we can use the plastic clips to the sides. Ah, oh, that's interesting, that's just come away. Ah, oh, that's interesting, that's the control panel. Looking in that control panel, very briefly, can't see any chips or anything, I think it's purely a three-wire matrix. Okay, that's allowing me to see a little bit more inside there. It's held under by that one. That looks like a clip and clip there, yeah, two clips. They're holding the display onto the front panel. It's all this plastic box all looks moulded. Ah, 
some reason seems to have come loose. I haven't done anything. Just wiggle it. Now there is a little cable here. It goes around the front, I presume. That's what the lighting of the display. So let's pull that out. So we should now be able to get that circuit board together with that one. Ah, and we're hitting down here, we're hitting on the uh, service socket board. So let's get that out of the way. I don't know what to do anyway, so it makes sense to get that out of the way. Okay. We'll go into there somehow. Oh, perhaps it's bottom. Plate comes off as well. Okay, well, let's turn the power supply off. I think I've got it, I just didn't realise that the power supply on. Noise in the background. There we go. That's the service. Socket out of the way. And this is the ground plane for the amplifier for the aerial antenna, whatever you want to call it. It looks like it's twisted. Inside there, you can just see there's like a little twist metal, so you know, take that out, it's going to twist it. So, we'll leave that in place and we'll unsolder the wire, and in the meantime, I'll have a switch of tea. That's a coffee. I just realised it's a coffee maker. Door, 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 door. Right, so, coming back to this front panel again. Tell you what, let's, let's take this back up here. A bit more room for me, a bit more for you to see. So, that is coming up there now. And that lifts up there, and yes, we're free. So, there's the whole panel out. It's quite a simple design of how things go together. It's all right, it's warming up. Right, well, a really strange thing happened. Um, I thought what I would try and do is to just have a little look around the circuit board to see if I could uh, see what's anything problematic and couldn't. So um, I looked at uh, the, um, the way the display was working and put uh, bolts into this, the backlight and the disc backlight came on. And then I decided, right, is it possible with one of the chips? So I froze around the chips with some uh, freezer, service old freezer, uh, very, very carefully, thinking that might start it up, nothing. Um, tried heating it up with the hot air tool. Um, again, nothing happened there. And I thought, right, I'll put it all back together and check it. And the interesting thing was, when I put it all back together, for some odd reason, the voltage that we had coming out of this power board onto the main board had virtually disappeared. It was down to millivolts. And I thought that was really strange. So I unplugged it and put the power back in and five volts came back up. And I thought this is really weird. There's something in this switching and I was checking around this little chip here and I couldn't see anything particularly. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if I put five volts directly in. And as you can see, um, the thing is working. So the problem is actually a power supply problem. Um, if I press the dim and all the functionality is working. Yeah. Uh, and if I switch it off, it goes to different modes. So the problem is with this little power board. And that's where we're going to have to go next. So, progress. Fantastic. What I suspect is where the customer has been using this with um, the wrong power cable, the wrong power supply, is this little regulator chip in here has failed. I've checked these capacitors, they all seem to be okay. This little regular regulator chip here, which gives the output 5 volts there, I think that chip itself has failed, or possibly one of these other components. I'm going to have to look around and see what I can find on there, um, because uh, it's uh, it's been getting 12 volts in, and it should only be getting 5 volts in, and that's just 5 volts, then the regulated power supply for the rest of the circuitry. And putting 5 volts in directly, we can see that the radio works. So the rest of the radio we can put back together, it's just this little bit here. Uh, this chip which is uh, uh, the possible problem so uh, I'm going to uh, make a few notes and see if I can find the circuit diagram for this chip uh, or a, a specification chip uh, sheet for this chip and see if we can work out from there what the problem is back soon Right, we're here back with this uh, Roberts uh, Autos radio and uh, we've uh, managed to get a replacement chip from uh, Roberts radio. Uh, so I left it on the shelf in pretty much a dismantled condition. So there's all the screws holding the back on and the circuit board which I left unconnected. So we can put that out of the way 
and then we've got to uh, address the fact that we've got to replace this chip on the circuit board let's bring that in there and do a bit of focusing there we go and so we've got to get that little chip off that circuit board there um, and probably the easiest way to do that I think bear in mind that there is at least one little surface mount uh, component right next to it, a little capacitor by the look of it, uh, is probably to um, do one of two things, is to uh, flood it with some uh, low melting point solder, um, so uh, that will make it easier, and then take it off with um, desoldering braid, because we've got all these capacitors around here, and I don't really want to start taking lots of other components out, um, to use a hot air tool so I'm going to see if I can do it that way um, I may just take that capacitor off anyway uh, but that's what we're going to do so I'm going to uh, <coughs> move the solder and uh, move the camera up out of the way Okay, so having put the uh, the circuit board in my bench vise, mm, still not 100% sure I'm going to be happy with it. Uh, this bench mat is not 100% flat, but anyway, let's continue uh, with trying to lift these legs up. It's actually brought the circuit board a bit closer to me. In fact, that leg is already lifted, which is good. So let's just touch that one, see if that one lifts as well. Yeah, that one's lifted. And that one is lifted. Okay, that's good. Maybe we have to go in. Oops. Be careful. Very careful touching wires with the soldering arm. Okay, that legs up. Like that. Okay. Last leg. You know, you go. That leg is out. Right. So now we've lifted all the legs up, can we put a small screwdriver under the chip? Will it just come off or is there heat needed to actually apply to the chip? Because sometimes
sometimes glue or whatever is applied to the chip I don't particularly want to put hot air on it if I can avoid it so oh, well, there's the chip gone anyway so we've damaged the chip so good job we got a replacement that's not going to come off that way is it? okay hot air time I do not I'm not a fan of hot air tools um, because it can do so much damage with other things but especially when it's in a confined environment so I'm going to try and use my very fine nozzle with my hot air tool and I'm going to have it on fairly low temperature to start with so let's get that going so I'm running this fan at 5 and the temperature at 200 let's just gradually bring it in see if we can concentrate on that chip I suppose we could put some flux in there, it might, uh, might help get underneath it. trying to occasionally put a little bit of a twist pressure on the chip with the tweezers I'm going to have to up the temperature 160 and the corner of the chip is broken away legs come off now so it's definitely the chip has had it and there we are in fact it's actually the chip has broken apart so whatever this core piece is at the bottom here it's obviously a heat pad regulator I would guess but that's what's used to conduct away the heat generated by its regulation process but it's oh, two little legs on it there I don't suppose this is going to help but sometimes fluxing Oops.
Okay, let's go up. I'm not sure this is, I don't want to do this too much, but I'll put the temperature up to 300. Come on, pad. That ain't coming off that way. Right. Okay, I'm going to turn the soldering iron up to 425 degrees. direct heat on it, that way, that's what was needed for a lot of temperature. Right, send the soldering arm back down again a little bit. Just putting pressure down on these pads. I'm not wiping them. Wiping them could so easily destroy them. It's still very hot at the minute. I'm going to let that cool down a little bit more. Hot air going is gradually going down in temperature. That's interesting. So it's over 400 degrees needed for that chip to come off of there. Let's hope that that chip was in fact the cause of the fault. But anyway, if it wasn't, it hasn't cost us much, just time. Let's open this chip and have a look at the underside of it. Yeah. So there's the new chip. And you can see on the underside it's got this pad. So the question now is. Do we use hot air to put it back on? I don't know. I've not recently had to deal with a chip with a heat pad underneath it. I'm not sure if it's a broken plastic we can just scrape out. I think the answer is yes. What I will do is I will tin these pads. Put some plugs on first. See how it still is the flux is dissolving straight away.
flat heat pump in the middle there. It looks like a little bit too much on there. chip in the right position. Well, I think I've got too much of a blob in the middle there, so that is it's not laying flat on there. Tinning on it, but not as much as it had before. A little bit more flux. And put the chip back on. Flux has gone a little bit solid that was on there before. is going to be awkward. So, hot air tool. Take it up to 350. And very slow speed. We want to blow the chip off the board. That's my Start it to float. Looks good to me. And just for good measure, I shall check with my extra magnifiers, make sure that. Subject. You just need to apply a little bit of solder to a little bit more flux on there so it doesn't
all joined together. Just what I was trying to avoid, and it's done it. Okay, it all looks pretty good to me now. Not the best soldering job I've ever done on a chip on a surface mount. So, we know that it gives 5 volts out, or well it did and with the old chip in there. Is that now going to give us still 5 volts out with a replacement chip? And will it then work in the radio if it does? So I'm going to get my power supply, make sure it's set to 5 volts in because that's what the mains adapter should be giving. all off. Positive on there, negative on there. Apply in 5 volts. What we got coming out of here? 5 volts. So we're still getting 5 volts out. 4.9 volts in. Four. Inch that up to 5 volts. Yep. So, so far it's giving out the same as it was before. Let's now see if that has made any difference to the way the radio works, or not. 
because it basically the radio did not function at all with that. So let's pop the radio board back in. Power connector. One of the audio connectors. The other audio connector. And the circuit board in the side there. Might as well stick the back on while we're at it. And then we will either jump for joy or go and make a coffee. suspect I know what's going to happen. So power on and there we go we have fixed it. Uh, replacing that little chip has certainly fixed it. Uh, let's switch it on. We've got FM. Between the Erridge Arms roundabout and the Throckington turn off near the Colt Crag Reservoir. Uh, A57 Sheffield yeah. and, and Dalton, really slow traffic because the snow, but it isn't managing Spot to get works. through there. Uh, the M62 entry slip. Mm. Depends what. We're back to speech. Before, there's a jackknife lock the snow there, southbound M1 at 42, we've got a jackknife lorry stuck onto the M62 on the uh, eastbound M62 dimmer. the queue is on the M1 about to junction 46, also the A59 at Brother Houses is blocked A57 Snake Pass is closed Seems to be fine. Woodhead Road, Home Moss is closed but the Woodhead Menu, Pass is scan, open and completely unsnow related scan. the A12 southbound and off brilliant, we have fixed it, wonderful stuff so there we are, we've uh, managed to fix this little Robert's radio by replacing the uh, chip which had obviously been uh, stressed by putting uh, too many volts in by the customers using a wrong adapter and uh, that seems to have fixed it. So uh, thanks very much for watching, uh, see you on the next video, bye for now.